Welcome to the High Bandwidth Word Podcast, Transformative Studies in the Word of God. I'm Pastor John Harrison. This is my podcast. Do you ever wonder about the future? Well, you're in luck. This season, we are studying future things revealed in the Word of God. I hope you're excited about that. Let's look forward to checking these things out. Let's fight the good fight of faith as we study future things. So in Daniel 12, there's um, a timeline that's given. Um, and when you, when you study out uh, the tribulation and those periods of time, uh, you'll find a certain, certain time periods show up. And the, the, you know, the two biggest ones are, we know that seven years long, this tribulational period, Daniel says that there's one week remaining, the 69th week, or the 70th week of Daniel, it's called. It's related to a prophecy in Daniel chapter 9. About 70 weeks are determined upon Israel, and 69 of them have passed already. You know, one still remains. And so we have this week, and we've spent some time looking at that week, that, that tribulation period. So the tribulation's here, and we've spent, you know, we've spent time looking at that, that period of time. Uh, but Daniel also lists, by the way, and um, that week, that, um, that seven years is broken up into two portions, two three-and-a-half-year periods, three-and-a-half-year periods, and it's described, you know, some places it's described in the middle of the week, which would be like, like right here, middle of seven years. Uh, some places called, there's, there's, they'll talk about it being for a times, times, and half a times. Okay, so for a time, times, and half a time, that's three and a half years. All right, sorry, my thingy in the way. A little better, all right. All right so now no, somebody else can't see it, so we'll, we'll slide it back, but <laughs> can't please everybody. Uh, we'll, we'll, get, we'll take care of it. I'll get it up a little higher. Anyways, for a time, time, and a half time, so, so one time, two times, and, and a half is three and a half times, or three and a half years. Um, and then other places, it talks about it for like 1,260 days. Like if you were in, hold your place in Daniel uh, 12 and just go to Revelation, I don't know, 14 maybe? It's in the top of my head here. Well, have, look at Revelation 11, verse 2. There's just all kinds of places with, that it deals with this way. So let's see if I can find. It's like in Revelation 11, verse 2, it says, verse 2, it says, But the court which is without the temple, leave out and measure not, for it is given unto Gentiles in the holy city, shall they tread underfoot, what? Forty and two months. Well, forty and two months is three years and six months. Anyways, this 1260 days, 12, you know, 42 months, I offhand, I can't remember where it says 12, there's a variety of places to talk about 1260 days, things like that. Uh, but anyways, that's a lot. Of, it's all referring to this, these periods of time. Well, Daniel, Daniel 12, makes this comment at the end of chapter 12. Or, uh, well, the, not the end of chapter. He's just, you know, an angel speaking to Daniel is what it is. But in Daniel chapter 12, verse 10, Daniel 12, verse 10, it says, many, so Daniel basically says, when is this, I mean, I don't understand this. When is this going to happen? He says, what's well, going to, it's still to the time of the end. Daniel, it's not, not about you. It's not going to affect you. You know, just you just need to go to bed, okay? Because because it's not affecting you. It's sometime at a time toward the end of the time. So verse ten says, "Many shall be purified and made white and tried." And we looked at that last time. There's a lot, right? Uh, the wicked shall do wickedly, and there's a lot, right? They don't repent of their uh, they don't repent of their sorceries. They don't repent of their murders. They don't repent of anything. God's being manifested, and they just don't change their heart. And none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. Verse eleven, and from the time. The day the sacrifice shall be taken away, okay, okay, and the abomination make it desolate set up. So from the time of that, there should be a thousand two hundred and ninety days, right? So when that's taken away, there's twelve hundred and what? Ninety days, not sixty. Ninety days, all right. Which is a, that's the first time you get that sort of comment. Everything else is twelve hundred and sixty. So twelve hundred ninety days. Well, in the middle of this week. Okay, in the middle of the tribulation, you know, right here in the middle, is when the abomination of desolation is set up. All right, and so it's, you know, so if we back up to Daniel 9, I'll just go there since we're right in Daniel. Verse 27. And he shall confirm the covenant for many, with many for one week, and in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to what? To cease, and for the... And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate. 
even under the cons consummation, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. So this something, whatever he does in the middle, he's going to cause the sacrifice to cease, right? And it's, and it's, it's going to be an overspreading. There's going to be abominations just spread out. He's going to make everything desolate, all right? Okay, so what is that, all right? Well, Lord Jesus Christ talks about it. So look at Matthew 24. So in verse 20, you know, so we were in, in Matthew 24 in a, in a response, and I mentioned, I quickly went over this last time, I thought I'd just quickly do it again to give you context. So in Matthew 24, in the middle, and again, you have the Lord Jesus Christ, basically, the, apostle, the, the disciples come to Christ and say, hey, what's going to happen? You know, what, what, you know, how are we going to get into this kingdom thing? All right, and Christ says, well, let me tell you about it, okay? So he takes them really through the tribulation, uh, seven years, you know, basically takes them through that period of time. Okay, in verse 14 he says, and the, uh, Matthew 24, and, the go and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for, us, for witness unto, unto all nations, and then shall what? The end come. The end's not the end of the tribulation. The, end's the, end of the, is, is the, the end is referring to that last part of the tribulation, the second half, which Christ says here in verse 21, for then shall be what? Great tribulation, such as not since the, be the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. We're looking at this, all these hurricanes and things like that, and that is nothing. It is nothing compared to what this time period is going to be like when it comes to judgment, right? We, you know, we look at the, you know, the devastation, and, you know, and, you know, when the, the Word of God says that every island shall be moved, right? Everything is brought flat. Well, hurricane just went straight through, the, like, you know, the Caribbean and leveled, you know, Barbuda, 95% all built, 95% of all buildings are, are, are basically destroyed. All right, Barbuda, it's a small little island off Antigua, or, or in, maybe it's Anquilly, I don't know what it is, but it's real close there. But anyway, so everybody was evacuated. There's only like 1,500 people live there, but they're all, it's all destroyed. It's nothing compared to this period of time. They'll have to come up with a new category of hurricane, okay? Category six or something like that, because it's gonna be, it'll level everything. Verse 15. So here in the middle of the week, because that's what's going on. So by the middle of the tribulation, everybody's heard the gospel, and, and then things start clicking. Why, why does it click? Well, verse 15 is really digging back to Daniel 9. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet. Know what it says here. So the abomination of desolation is a person. Okay? Was spoken of by Daniel the prophet. Stand in what? The holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand. So the wise are going to understand. The unwise are not going to understand. So it's talking about Antichrist. Then it says, let them all which be in Judea flee into the mountains, right? So the abomination is desolation is a person. He's going to stand in the holy place. So from the time of the abomination and desolation is set up, middle of the week, until basically it says, you know, until, basically until the length of time for that is 1290 days. He's going to be standing in the holy place for 1290 days. You with me? Go over to Paul, or 2 Thessalonians 2. That's, I think I just referred to it last time, but let's read it. Maybe I didn't, but uh, 2 Thessalonians 2. The, the Apostle Paul gives a little bit more clarity, so he's just going to tell you right out right. Christ said, if you understand, here you go. You'll, you'll figure it out. The Apostle Paul shares it. So in Thessalonians 2, 2 Thessalonians 2, start in verse 3. Now Paul's in reference like to the body of Christ that, again, he's sort of like, he's like, sort of like the angel told Daniel, this doesn't affect you, go to bed, don't worry about it. The Apostle Paul's saying the same thing to the body of Christ. He says, let no man deceive you. For, uh, by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that Son of Man shall be revealed, the Son of Perdition. There's going to be, there's going to be a falling away. We're going to be taken out of here first, right? Then the man of sin is going to be revealed, who's going to become the Son of Perdition. And here's what he does. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he, as God, what? Sits. Sits in the temple of God, showing himself that what? He is, he is God. That's the abomination of desolation, all right? He, you know, so he's going to sit himself and call himself God. So he's going to be in that position for 1,290 days. So what that does is if I, you know, if, and again, I, I think there's a little bit of, you know, it doesn't have to be day 1260, but it's the issue. It's, it's, this, is the, this is the period of time. There's a time. So at the end of the tribulation, okay, there's, a, there's also a period of time, okay, a little bit of gap, 
But then you have the next event is the second coming of Christ. So Christ comes back, right? All right. And, but this is day 1260 for the middle. I'm going to put day 1290 here, all right? Because it's, it's, there's, some, there's stuff, because Antichrist is still sitting on the throne, all right? Christ doesn't come back and just go straight to Jerusalem, right? There's a lot of stuff happening. And then in Daniel 12, it talks about, look what it says of this, because I think it's interesting, because everybody's not blessed at day 1290. Everybody's blessed if you make it to day 1335, all right? If you're back at Daniel 12 again, it says, verse 12 says, Blessed is he that waiteth and cometh to the thousand three hundred and five and thirty days. So blessed is he that makes it to here. So at this point, you're blessed. Not you, you're already in heavenly places blessed, but, but those on the earth will be blessed at that point. All right, at this point. This is a total of 75 days from that, or I should do this, there's 30 days here, 30 days here, and then another 45 days, all right? Okay, what, you with me so far? So Antichrist is on the throne until here. He's removed, he's replaced. Who's on the throne now? Jesus Christ, no, Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ is, is on the throne now. So what's he been doing between here and here? We'll get there. By the way, and so why, he's on the throne here, why isn't everybody blessed now? All right, well, because, because of this. Go to Revelation 19. So why isn't it all perfect at that point? Why isn't it all taken care of at that point? Well, look what Jesus Christ comes to do at the second coming, all right? So at the second coming, which, by the way, the first coming was uh, back, you know, as a baby, second coming and judgment, and there's a secret coming, which is for the body of Christ, and we're gone. Verse 11, Revelation 19, and I saw heaven opened, behold, a white horse, just talking about Christ coming back, and he that sat upon the horse was called who? Faithful and true. And in righteousness he does what? Judge. Stop that. Just stop right there. He judges and what? Make war. There's judgment. You know about the national judgments, right? Supposedly, right? The, the, the goat, sheep and goat judgment. When's that happen? It happens in here, All right? So, I mean, it happens, right? He comes, you also know Matthew 25 talks about there's two at the well, the one shall be taken. They're taken in judgment. When's that happen? Well, that happens in here, right? Let's just look at some verses and see, see what works out. So anyway, so you have judgment and you have judgment, all right? He's purifying the land. He's purifying the earth. That's what's happening here, mankind. The land, by, when he gets to day 1290, there is not one unbeliever in the land, all right? When you get to day 1335, there's not one unbeliever on the earth at that point. Now, there'll be ones after that, because they're born, things like that. There's heathen and stuff like that. Uh, but that's, because uh, blessed is he that makes it. If you make it to here, that means, hey, you did, your, you did what you need to do. So let's just look at a couple of verses. So let's look at um, uh, Amos. Look at Amos 2, Amos first, book of Amos. So it's after Daniel, right? After Joel. Oh, by the way, in Revelation 19, he comes with armies, right? He comes with... Uh, I'll read it. I'll read it to you. So look at Amos 1. I've got to read it, Revelation 19 again. So, he, you know, he comes with, in righteousness, this is Revelation 19. You'd you be at Amos 1. If you want to be at Revelation 11, 19, you can, but be at Amos 1. Verse 12 says, His eyes were as a flame of fire on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. He was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. Verse 14, And the armies which were in heaven, what? Followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. So the armies of heaven are coming with him, right? All right, so since I read that verse, let's go to Joel. Hold yourself in Amos, just back up one book toward the front of the Bible, the book of Joel, chapter 2. <coughs> Joel 2. 
Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, in verse 1. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. So where, where are the people supposed to tremble? The land. When it talks about the land, what's it talking about? Israel. What Israel. Now is Israel what you see on the map today? No, it's far larger than that, all right? Israel... Um, is from if you look at the Mediterranean Ocean, it goes up here where Syria is at today, okay, and goes down into where like Saudi Arabia is at today, and reaches the whole way over to really about the great river Euphrates, <clears throat> is at least what the promise, the land that was promised to Abraham, right? That's the land, okay, and Christ is going to purify that land. Um, verse 2 says, It's a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness, as the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong. It's talking about this army that's coming to Christ. There hath not been ever the like, neither shall be any more after it, even in the years of many generations. Verse 3 says, A fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burneth. The land is the garden of Eden before them, and behind them what? A desolate wilderness. Yea, and nothing shall escape them. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses and horsemen, so shall they run. Like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains shall they leap, like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble, as a strong, peop strong people set in battle array. Before their face the people shall be much pained. They're going to see them coming. All faces shall gather blackness, right? Uh, sort of like what's going on right now, like the hurricane coming up, everybody's scared, right? Well, this is you're going to see it, you know, you're going to see something that's bigger than that. Verse 7 <clears throat> says, They shall run like mighty men, they shall climb the wall like men of war, and they shall march every one on his, uh, on his ways, and they shall not break their ranks. Neither shall one thrust another. They shall walk every one in his path, and when they fall upon the sword, they shall what? I'll be wounded. I'll be wounded. They shall run to and fro in the city. They shall run, up, uh, run upon the wall. They shall climb up upon the houses. They shall enter at the windows like a thief. The earth shall quake before them, the heavens shall tremble, the sun and the moon shall be dark, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. And the Lord shall utter his voice before what? His army. For, turn the page for me. His camp is very great for his strong, that execute his word, for the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. And what? Who can, can, can abide it, right? So when Christ comes back, <clears throat> at this point, this is just a few days after 1260, I think. It's not much time after that. He comes back, and he comes back with an army, all right? He's not heading to Jerusalem, all right? He's heading, through the, he's heading to the land, okay? He's, he's, making, he's judging and, and bringing war, and there's a fire before him. Oh, sorry. There's a, you know, he's bringing fire and judgment, and it's like there's no place that escapes. That's what it's sort of reading, all right? Up in the mountain, in the house, you know, in the windows. It doesn't matter where you're at. You can't be hiding, okay? They're going to find you. And there's judgment made. And if you're not one of the righteous, okay, you will be judged. Right? Amos chapter 1. Amos chapter 1 <clears throat> and 2, I tend to read it as a, as, as a literal passage. Okay? And it describes this sort of judgment that's happening. Right? And I, don't, I, mean, I don't have a, again, I'm not great at map drawing. But if this is the Mediterranean Sea, so over, like over here's, you know, here's Italy, right? This is Italy. It looks like a boot, right? That, there, that'll fix that, right? And it goes over like that, okay? Over here is uh, Egypt. So here's the Nile River, right? And there's some sea stuff going on in here, right? There's some Caspian Seas and Black Seas. I don't know. They're over there somewhere like that, okay? Um, <clears throat> so, right you now, Israel is in this region. That's the land, all right? That's sort of the land. <clears throat> it reaches over in the, there in the Egypt and in that point. What God calls a land is different than what maybe the political maps say. I mean, if the rapture happened right now and a few, you know, and um, there's a little bit of time, there's going to be some political readjustment. When God talks about the ten kings, those ten kings are located like around this region, all right? They're actually, so... This is, this is like the political Israel. But what was promised, the land that's promised, is far greater. Okay? You know what I'm saying? So what God calls it is different than what maybe man has a political map. All right? Okay? Ezekiel, when Israel is um, entering into the kingdom, the land is divided up by tribe. All right? And the territories look like this. They reach over to the river Euphrates. 
they go like this. So these are, this, these are the swipes of the property that the tribes have. Okay, there need to be 12 there. There's another special one for the king, that's Christ, all right? But anyways, they're, 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 they go off like this to a river, okay? So that's the land, the, the extent of the land. That will be the land that is um, uh, during the, ki in the kingdom that is Israel's, right? And that's, you know, when you look at what happens here in Amos, he purifies much of this land, probably. I mean, I can ma map, I, or Amos there maps out about, if this is um, Jordan, the River Jordan, that's R River Jordan, right? I'm trying to do that. He, you map out about this much you can see in Amos, all right? Uh, and I, my assumption is he takes care of the rest of it too since he's talking about purifying the land. So Amos 1, look what it says, okay, in verse 2. So Amos has this, this vision. Uh, by the way, it's two years, before the, two years before the earthquake, whenever he had this thing, but... Okay, verse 2, and this is what the Lord said, and, 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 Lord, and he said, The Lord will roar from Zion, and utter his voice from Jerusalem, and, in the, habita and the habitations of the shepherd shall mourn, and the top of Carmel shall wither. Thus saith the Lord. Okay, so basically that's sort of a summation. Okay, so he's going to roar out of Zion, and then you know, the top of Carmel is going to wither, and that's where he's going to end up. Verse 3, Thus saith the Lord, For three transgressions of Damascus, and for four I will not turn away the punishment thereof, there, because they have uh, threshed Gilead with threshing instruments of iron. But I will send a fire into the house of Hazael, which shall devour the palaces of Ben-Hadad. I will break also the bar of Damascus, cut off the inhabitants from the plain of Avon. And him that holdeth the scepter from the house of Eden, the people of Syria shall go into captivity under curse, saith the Lord. So, and then for thus, for, uh, for thus saith the Lord, for three transgressions of Gaza and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof. Anyways, but Damascus is located somewhere up in here. All right, this northern part. And then he talks about Gaza, okay, and for four, I will not turn away the punishment there because I ca uh, they carried away captive, but there's reasons. But verse seven, but I will send a fire on the wall of Gaza, which will devour the palaces of I will cut off the inhabitants from Ashdod, and it holds the scepter from Ascalon. I will turn my hand against e uh, Ekron, and the remnant of Philistines shall perish, saith the Lord God. That's all down in this region here. So my map is getting bad already, right? Let me pick a different color. We start up here in the northern part, okay, and then we're down here, all right? So I'm going to trace that down, okay? In verse um, 11, or, or verse 10, and I will send a fire on the, but I will send a fire on the wall of Tyrus, that, which will devour the palace. Tyrus is down here as well, right? Uh, for thus saith the Lord, for, uh, well, sorry, I lost my place. Verse, verse 11, for thus saith the Lord for three transgressions of Edom, and before I will not turn away the punishment thereof, explains why. Verse 12, But I send a fire upon Teman, which shall devour the palaces of Bozrah. Thus saith the Lord for three transgressions of the children of Ammon and for four. Anyways, if you keep going down through here, and you get out a biblical map from the time of, you know, 2,000, 3,000 years ago, what you find is you find places here, places here, places here, places here, places here, and it sort of falls like this. So, I think He's making, basically he's purifying the land because that's what he says he's doing, okay? He's, he's, here's a fire. And it does, you know, the palaces and everything, it doesn't matter where they're at, he's cleaning out the land, all right? And he's doing this. Two are at the well. Two are in the field. There's judgment. One's taken, one's left behind, all right? One left behind is entering into the kingdom, the righteous, so left, you know, shall enter into the kingdom. And, he, and by the way, and you, and you go and you find out that he goes comes to here, and then finally, okay, he goes into Jerusalem, all right? So when you get to um, uh, verse uh, 4, well, verse 4 talks about, for three transgressions, of uh, chapter 2, sorry, chapter 2, uh, it transgressions Judah, all right, so he's in Judah, um, and then he's in Israel, verse 6, Israel's the northern, in the northern part, okay, so he's heading down on the coast, sweeps up around, then he comes to Judah, and then Israel, all right? Um, and then what you're going to find out, he's going to end up heading into Jerusalem. So chapter 1 and 2 sort of describe, I think, a path, right? A path where we're going. So go to Zechariah 13. Zechariah 13. I mean, there's so much, there's so much given in, in, the, in the, there's so much information is given. If you put it all together, you start seeing a, an interesting picture. So if you're in um, Zechariah 13, look what it says in verse, uh, well, verse 2, start there. Just a comment. Zechariah 13, verse 2. And it shall come to pass in that day, 
That's referring to the day of the Lord when the Christ comes back. Zechariah 13, verse 2. It shall come to pass in that day, since the prophetic future, saith the Lord of hosts, that I will cut off the names of what? The idols out of the land, and they shall no more be remembered. I also cause the prophets and unclean spirit to what? Pass out of the land. That means die. Right? It shall come to pass that when any shall prophesy, then his father and his mother that begat him shall say unto him, Thou shalt not live. For thou speakest lies in the name of the Lord, and his father and mother that begat him shall thrust him through when he prophesies. So moms and dads kill their kids. So. It's come to pass in that day that the prophet shall be ashamed every one of his vision. When he, hath a pro when he hath prophesied, neither shall they wear a rough garment to receive. They're not going to look like a, a prophet. All right. Down in verse 8. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be what? Cut off. But the third shall be left therein. I will bring the third part, what, through the what? Through the fire. And it will refine them as silver is refined. And will try them as gold is tried. That's judgment, right? They, they, they shall call on my name, and I will hear them. I will say, it is my people. And they shall say, what? The Lord is my God. Okay? So the issue is that they're all, they're, 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 God's going through the land, and there's, when he goes through the land, what's left are his children in the land, Right? Then, the, then this other judgment, what you're going to find out over here, is what's the rest of his children and the worst, rest of the world. All right? Um, let's see what else we can look at here. Go to Ezekiel 39. Ezekiel 39. So Jeremiah, Ezekiel. Ezekiel 39. So, okay, so, so at the end of this conflict, so yeah, we'll go there. So at the end of this, so he makes through this battle through here, right? He goes through the land. But you still have this, what's this battle of Armageddon? So, you know, is this the battle of Armageddon going through the land? Well, he's not. He's purifying the land. He's, I mean, there's people living there that should, you know, should be there. He's doing what Israel was supposed to do when they went into the land. All right? When they went into the land, were they supposed to cohabitate with Philistines? Or, the, you know, the Amorites, the Hittites, uh, all the ites, you know, all those ites, right? They were supposed to kill them all, Okay. They were supposed to, or, or push them out. They were supposed to destroy them all and then not let them there, okay? Well, God's doing it. He's taking care of it, okay? So, so there's still this battle of Armageddon that we hear about, right? That we talks about, right? Well, that's, Ezekiel's talking about in Ezekiel 39. So down in verse 4, you're going to read through it here, but this Gog and Magog that's really dealing with the Ham and Gog and stuff that's really dealing with the northern part here. But also, I'm going to read down through here so you can see what happens. In verse 4, 39, uh, thou shalt fall upon the mountains of Israel, thou and all thy bands, and the people that is with thee. I will give thee unto the ravenous birds of every sort, and to the beasts of the field to be devoured. Thou shalt fall upon the open field, for I have spoken, it saith the Lord God. I will send a fire on Magog, and among them that dwell carelessly in the isles, and they shall know that I am the Lord. So will I make my holy name, uh, well, go up to verse 8. Behold, it is, it is come, and it is done, saith the Lord God. This is the day whereof a what? I have spoken. So this is the day of Armageddon. So how and Gog is like back up here in this region. So south of Damascus is in the valley of um, uh, Megiddo, all right, in that region. So what Christ does, he comes down, sweeps down through, comes back up. He really uh, takes care of both, you know, comes up through Judah and Israel. And then before he goes to Jerusalem, he goes back up north again to the valley of Haman Gog, or the uh, uh, yeah, valley of Megiddo. Uh, where, where you have this Gog, Magog, and you have this sort of like, he says, I'm going to give you the ravenous beast. So go over to Revelation 19 again. Revelation 19, and this might make sense here. Could have read it, verses 39. Anyways, if you, if, if you want a parallel passage to read, in Ezekiel 39, 17 through 20, is really what's being referred to right here. In verse 19, it says, of Revelation 19, or verse 17 of Revelation 19, I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to the, all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God, that you may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men, the flesh of horses and them that sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. Right? So, that, so he's calling, why is he calling for the birds to come eat the flesh? They're dead, right? There's been a big battle. If you back up just a little bit to Revelation, I just want to say 14. In um, verse 18, we, I refer to this. At the end, part, end of the tribulation, God's making the path available so the kings of the earth can come there. 
So Revelation 14, 18, And the, another angel came out from the altar, which had power of the fire, and cried with a loud voice to him that had the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in thy sickle, uh, sharp sickle, gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe. And the angel thrust in a sickle into the earth, and gathered a vine of the earth, and cast into the great winepress of the wrath of God. And the winepress was trodden without the city, and blood came out of the winepress, even to the horse's bridle, by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs. So it talks about this this uh, place, this lo lo location where, this, where this, you know, we call this the Battle of Armageddon, uh, where, where there's just a massive destruction. The armies of the earth have come and fought. Um, Revelation 18 talks about it, as w or I think 18 talks about it as well. Um, but anyways, these these, you have this big battle, right? But anyway, so the, the final conflict is at the Battle of Armageddon. The final, final Battle of Armageddon. And then... He comes back. So, so, that, so now what we've done, we've made it. We've been, we've been, time's passing. Days are passing. Okay, and we get pretty close to here. And so right here is the battle of Armageddon. That's the that last battle. He's been purging the land, right? Now while this has been going on, there's, there's a couple weeks of time. So before the valley of Armageddon, Christ is coming down through here. What do you think Antichrist and Satan is doing? Okay. They're deceiving the world, right? Remember at the, in the last judgments where the, there's three unclean spirits come out of the, the, I mean, I don't know if you remember that in Revelation 16, 16, that's right, 16. Three unclean spirits come out and, they see the world, and they're gathering a huge army, right? Uh, one of the judgments is the great river Euphrates dries up, right? Why? To make way for the kings of the east. So the kings of the east are coming, the kings of, you know, all the kings are coming with their armies, the Antichrist is deceiving them. And they bring him into the valley of Megiddo. And that's where, so, so they're going to go to where Christ was last seen on the radar, right? Okay. So he was seen here. That's where he showed up. So that's where they're coming. They're actually trying to come down to Israel, to Jerusalem. All right. But Christ is cleaned out of the land. He comes up. He meets the armies here in the valley of Megiddo. And that's the valley of decision uh, and things like that. And that's where this huge slaughter of the, of the armies of the world happened. Right. Back to Zechariah. And we'll finish with this. Since it already started. What? Last verse? I got a minute. Sorry. This timeline stuff is interesting. We're going to go back and read Ezekiel a little uh, next time and read what happens after the tribulations or after this day. Revelation, or Zechariah 14. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, and thy, thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. Verse 2. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle. And the city shall be taken, the houses rifled, the women ravished, and half the city shall go forth into captivity. The of people shall not be cut off from the city. So that's actually happening in the middle part. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. Um, verse 4. So that's sort of this. That's where he comes forth to do that battle. Verse 6. And his feet shall stand in, the day up, in that day upon the Mount of Olives. All right? He gets off his horse. All right? At that point. Which is before Jerusalem on the east... And the, and the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west. And there shall be a great valley, and half the mountain shall remove toward the north and half of the toward the south. Notice this. And ye shall flee to the valley of the mountains. For the valley of the mountains shall reach unto Azel, yea, ye shall flee like as, as you fled from before the uh, earthquake in the days of Isaiah, king of Judah, and the Lord of my God shall come and all saints with thee. And shall come to, anyways. So when he gets off his horse here in Jerusalem, the mountain of Cleves, or the big valley, and all the folks that are in, in Jerusalem that are sort of, you know, been held captive in prisons, you know, I mean, the believers, they flee out of the city. Flee to him. Okay? They flee to him. And it shall come to pass that uh, in that day that the light shall not be clear nor dark, but it shall be one day which shall be known to the Lord, not day nor night. Basically, like this, it's, just, it's daylight. Okay? Sort of, sort of like uh, an eclipse. You know, the full eclipse is sort of like twilight, I guess, right? Um, that at the end. Anyway, so he's going to, they're going to come out and then he's going to head into the city. That's when you hit this point. And then we're going to go back to Revelation. You find out that the beast and the false prophet, which by the way, at, the, at this battle are cast into the lake of fire. Okay. And then Satan is taken and cast into the pit. When Satan is removed from authority with the Antichrist, his authority, that's when the abomination of desolation ends. Right. Christ now sits on the throne. Okay. At that point. So that's what's happening at that point take you through that part. Hopefully, if you have questions, feel free to ask next time. We're going to end now. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for your word, Lord. 
Help us, Lord, to uh, just uh, take these things and know, Lord, that they're not for us, but then be thankful, Lord, that, uh, it, it, that uh, you have all things in control. And we're looking forward to the day, Lord, when we stand in your presence. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You've been listening to the High Bandwidth Word Podcast, transformative studies in the Word of God. I hope you've enjoyed the study. Please subscribe, like, and comment. This podcast is available on many podcast platforms. Just search on the title. Now, until next time, fight the good fight of faith and God's best to you.